This is GA strength, muscle and flexibility, phase two, day two. So this is the upper body day. This is the pull up on rings, or as you can see, they're not actually rings, they're just the handles that I try and get all my clients to use. So they act the exact same as doing them on gymnastic rings. So you can start from the bottom, Shane, cross your legs, bring them up the back. And what you'll find with these rings, go, start your set, is the range of motion is far bigger. So this is my absolute favorite movement for the upper body. Because the range of motion is so big because you have to be lean to be able to do chin-ups, which is what we're all looking for is to be as lean as possible and not just strong, not just adding a heavier weight. And they rotate around your anatomy. So you can see we all have different uh, width of shoulders. And that's the best thing about using these handles for cable rows, for lap pull downs, or for chin ups, is they're gonna rotate around your anatomy. So take a few seconds break. So as you pull, they're rotating, and you get an extra few inches of range of motion at the top, and you get a bigger stretch at the bottom as well. So go for three more reps. So it hangs straight at the bottom. So it gets really low at the bottom, and then pull, and because the handles can rotate, you get even higher at the top. And I feel them, especially in my biceps at the top. So, and squeeze one more, really, really high. Pull, 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 pull. And it's far easier on the shoulder joint to train to absolute failure with these than the barbell, because as you're pulling, and as you're pushing the envelope that bit in the last couple of reps, it's rotating and it's a lot easier on your shoulder. This is the 45 degree dumbbell bench press. So you can start the set there, Shane. So what I love about this exercise, just twist a little bit, so rotate a little bit. It's not to fully neutral, yeah, semi-neutral. So what I love about this exercise, and we learned this from Charles Poliquin a few years ago now, is it's the most uh, applicable to sport. Because if you are playing rugby or Gaelic football, most of your handoffs are done in this position. They're done where you're kneeling down a little bit or leaning forward a little bit, and that's almost the exact same uh, position or angle as the 45 degree dumbbell press. So while you should be pressing at all angles, from a shoulder press all the way down to a dip, this 45 degree uh, bench press with dumbbells is what I prefer for uh, people playing sport, Gaelic footballers most of the time. So just make sure your feet are behind your knees, that you're planted into the bench so your ass isn't sliding down the bench. Your head is pushing in. Let's go for two more. Your head and your shoulders are pushing into the bench. Squeeze as tight as you can. Push your knees out hard as you can. Squeeze your glutes and punch up. Good, excellent, well done. This is the one arm dumbbell row. This is absolutely brilliant strength training movement that's you know as old school as it gets, but still obviously just as effective as it ever was. So what you're trying to do is to make sure your knee is in line with your knee. So just drop the weight there for a second, Shane. So it's come up to the top. So as you start, put your knee and then put your other knee in line with it. And if you put this knee too far forward, move it up here, what you'll find is you start rounding your back. Okay, so make sure put the knee in line with the other knee in a good wide stance. The second part, put your hand down here, is to have your shoulder over your hand. If your shoulder goes back and you sit back into it like that, you're more likely to round your back. And if the shoulder goes too far forward, keep going too far forward, you do something similar as well. So knee in line with knee, shoulder over your hand. Now arch your back and start your reps. Arch the back, the hand go forward, squeeze up, pull to your hip. That's perfect. And drive up, pull it up fast. Exactly. So while you won't feel your lat moving or your lat working in the same way as a cable row, it should be working just as hard if you set yourself up like this. Knee in line with knee, shoulder over your hand, arch your back and drive the elbow backwards. Squeeze. And squeeze up, let's go five more, squeeze. And as the set goes on, your lower back, glutes and hamstrings will be under more pressure to hold you into position. So arch your back, squeeze back. And that's a brilliant, core exercise and very, very functional movement. Okay, all right, this is dips. So the first thing we're gonna do is show you how to put on the belt properly. So the big mistake a lot of people make is they'll put the, weight, the uh, chain through the weight first and then onto the other side. 
What you want to do is put it on through the belt first, then through the weight, and then clip it onto the far side. The big mistake, I'll just show you here, the big mistake a lot of people make is they put it through the weight and they put it back on the one side and then it swings over to one leg. So if you want it in the middle, you put it on the far side. And then it hangs straight down. It makes a huge difference as you get into heavier weighted sets. All right, you can hop up here. So you want your hands to be just outside your pockets. Okay, it's not chest dips, it's just a normal tricep dip. So hands a little bit closer, go hands a little bit closer, just outside your pockets, up to the top. Cross your legs, bring them up behind you, squeeze your glutes as tight as you can. And once you get down to the bottom, drive up. You see the range of motion there is excellent. So his shoulder is far lower than his elbow. And that's the range of motion you're looking for. And because your hands are in that neutral position, unlike a barbell uh, bench press, there's far bigger range of motion. It's far easier on the shoulder joint. And you're gonna work your chest, shoulders, and triceps far harder in a safer way. So it's win-win all around. Very, very rarely do you ever see anyone getting injured doing dips, but it happens an awful lot with too much barbell bench pressing. So in the programs that I use, I do very little barbell bench pressing and an awful lot of dips. I've been training for 13, 14 years now. I've never injured my shoulder. Okay, well done. This is the band pull apart. So this is gonna work your rear delts really, really hard. And I like to do these every single week for at least six, seven years now. I'm doing this exercise at least once a week. Okay, we can start there. So a couple of main coaching points is what you wanna do is make sure you're grabbing the band wide enough so that when you pull it apart, you keep tension on the band as it comes back in as well. That's the main mistake people make when they're doing a band pull apart is they don't keep tension on the band. So keep your hands up higher. Pull hard, good, and back. Good, and you're pulling to your chin or your neck. You're not letting it go too low. And as you can see there, his wrists are good and strong. So a lot of people, what happens is they start to get fatigued. They do something like that, where the wrists come back a bit. They're taking pressure off their rear delts. So keep the pronated grip, pull the band apart, hard as you can, and you'll feel it here a lot more. And keep going. You feel the traps and the rear delts worked really hard. And I'd be doing 100 reps per session. So something like 50, 30, 20, five sets of 20 with short breaks, something like that, where you're just really finishing off your shoulders at the end of a session or your rear delts at the end of a session. You can train it to failure very often and very hard. And you're never gonna get overtrained from doing too many band pull parts. It's also a great warm-up exercise for your shoulders. This is the Comerford Curl. So this is just a small, simple variation on the normal bicep incline curl that works on flexibility. It's the first time you do these, it'll be a very uncomfortable position, but if you do them for a month or two, uh, you're gonna have far better flexibility in your shoulders. So instead of your elbows by your sides, or your hands by your side, doing a normal bicep curl like this, you simply bring it out to the side. And you'll be able to use lighter weight, but you'll feel that pull on the shoulder joint a lot more. So the bicep crosses the elbow joint and the shoulder joint. And a lot of the problem with two people doing bicep curls is they only do the shortened range all the time where they're bent over and they don't really fully stretch out the bicep. And if that gets seriously tight, you can end up tearing your bicep. So if you are doing a lot of chin-ups, exercises like that, you can pull the shoulders forward into bad posture. And this is the perfect exercise to negate the effects of that. So bring it all the way down to the side, chest up, shoulders back, all the way down to the side. Big stretch, fully straighten your elbow and up, go for three more. And again, it's not an exercise you'll be using very, very heavy weight on, but you'll feel that massive stretch in the bicep, which will lead to better health in the shoulder joint and better technique and exercises like your presses and your chin-ups. This is the parallel push-up. So you can start there, Shane. So what we're gonna really focus on here is the range of motion. That's why you'd use parallettes. And this is one of the most underrated exercises you can do for the upper body in the gym. So all the way down. So I would be putting this exercise as way more beneficial 
than a cable crossover or a machine uh, push press or machine bench press. So get real low at the bottom, feel a full stretch on the chest, very, very healthy stretch on the shoulder. And then at the top, you wanna wing your scapulas, bring your scapula as far apart as possible. So when someone comes to me and they're trying to improve their bench press in an off season for the GA or just improve your bench press in general, I'll often make them do high rep push-ups for a four week phase and do no bench pressing with a barbell whatsoever. And when they go back to barbell bench pressing, they often hit PBs. Even though they're doing a body weight exercise for higher reps with some dumbbell exercises with a bigger range of motion, the joint feels so much healthier. You're pressing at different angles, you're getting a bigger stretch on the chest, and you go back and your, uh, your max strength in the bench press is a lot higher. So you can see his shoulder flexibility is very good. So we can feel a big stretch at the bottom. That position there is excellent. So if you can't go that low at the start, don't worry, you'll build up to it. And for the last rep or two, come up to the top. Just lift your hips up higher, push it back a little bit. Once you go forward and down, exactly, and back and up. Perfect, perfect. And the higher your hips are, the harder it's gonna be. But sometimes when you're doing a tough set, your hips lower a bit, that's fine. Uh, but you wanna keep them as high as possible throughout the set.